All right, what up folks? It's your man, 100 Days of Summer. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to fall asleep consciously. I wanna share this information because this has changed the way that I see reality. Um, to be able to see my dreams manifest, to look directly into them and to see how crystal clear they look and how much like reality they are, changes the way that you see this reality. The first thing that you have to understand how to do is to put the body to sleep consciously and to keep your mind awake. The way that that's done is by understanding a certain type of breathing and a certain type of way to um, understanding what daydreaming is basically. So the first thing that you have to do is do a thing called gravity breathing, which is the way that you exhale naturally at night. Uh, the body is relaxed, everything is kind of paralyzed and gravity pushes the air out. You inhale, but then gravity pushes the air out. So the way that you would simulate that is by taking a deep inhale, like you're letting it out like that, like you get your last breath, like that kind of, right? So as you do that, you feel relaxation wash over your whole body. The more you do that, the more relaxed you become. As you're doing that though, you will end up falling asleep. So what you have to do is observe what's happening in front of your eyes here because the deeper you go to sleep what ends up happening is this thing called the hypnagogic imagery starts the, the hypnagogic imagery is like the colorful swirling lights that you see once you start to see that you have to pay attention to it but not look directly at it this is where the daydreaming um, thing comes in at so daydreaming is basically a trance state that's why when you see someone daydreaming their eyes are wide open but they're not observing their surroundings. They're in their self. They're observing something inside themselves. They're using their third eye, which is their mind's eye, to actually see. And these two eyes are now closed, even though they're wide open. All right, so you have to learn how to simulate that so that you can stay mind awake while your body falls asleep. The way that you simulate daydreaming or put yourself into that trance state is by having a blank stare where you're not focused on anything. Like right now, I can look at this hand right here, even though I'm looking straight forward, right? I'm looking straight forward, but I'm actually looking at my hand right now. So I'm using my peripheral vision, which opens me up to everything, as opposed to me now focusing at the camera. So as you're doing the breathing and you start to fall asleep, when the hypnagogic imagery starts, you don't look directly at it because when you do that, you keep your body awake. And when you look directly at the images as they begin to form, they dissipate. So you can't look directly at them. You have to go into the gaze, right? That's what I call it, the gaze. You have to go into that trance state. And as you're going into that trance state, you're not looking at anything, but you can see everything that's going on. And when you do that, you anchor yourself with your subconscious mind. So as your body falls asleep, you ride that wave. So when a lot of people, you see people dip like this, that's the point where the conscious mind checks out, but the subconscious mind stays awake and that's when you go into having a dream. What really is happening is that's the moment when your body falls asleep and your spirit separates from the body. That's what's, that's really what's happening. That's what you'll feel happen a lot of the times when, when you uh, successfully ride that wave in. As the body dips like this, you feel the spirit rise out of the body. That's typically what happens. So I've had this experience over and over and over and over and over and over again. So when the hypnagogic imagery starts, you're looking through it, right? Focus back here in that sense. And what happens is this imagery operates like a Rorschach image. Uh, Rorschach image. I think I'm saying that right. With the ink blots that psychiatrists or whoever shows you, and they say, "What does this remind you of?" And you say, "Oh, it looks like a butterfly." It, that's what the hypnagogic imagery does. It moves and swirls until the subconscious mind sees a shape that reminds it of something that it can emulate and turn into a picture. And then it turns it into a picture. And then you see it form crystal clear right in front of you. It's kind of 2D still. It's almost like you're looking into a moving picture already. What the temptation is, is that you'll use your two eyes to look directly at it as opposed to continuing to have your gaze. That's why you have to practice being in that trance in a long time in order to successfully do this. If you look directly at it, the picture goes away, but then your mind is blown because your eyes are closed. It was pitch black and boom, light comes on. And when that light comes on, it's like full super HD imagery. And you're seeing a sky with trees in the background and stuff like that. And then you look at it and it goes away. 
but you can still see that light residue. You can still see the image and light in front of you. The same way as if you look at the sun and look away and close your eyes, you will see that sunspot. It's still there. And it's mind blowing because where did that light come from? Right? So like when Jesus talks about if your eye be single, right? You close your eyes and you use that gaze, your mind's eye, and then your body is filled with light. That's literally what he says, right? So you're experiencing how to step into that realm consciously. So the light pops on, boom, you ride that wave. And basically, if you can stay into that trance state, the picture kind of comes to you like this and wraps around you. And then it becomes three dimensional, just like that. And now you're in the thing that you were just looking at. And you can look around and you'll start to see the things form in your dream around you. You'll see the people begin to form around you and the scenery and stuff like that, that wasn't already formed and you'll be able to step right into a lucid dream. The beauty of that is you are directly connected with your psyche. That's what the word soul means. That's what the Greek word for soul is, psyche. You know, psychiatrists, psychology, you know, all that type of stuff is, is about understanding the mind, getting into the mind. That, that's the way that you handle it in a 3D way, right? Matter versus matter. But going into the spirit, you can go directly into the operating system and speak with the embodiments of your psyche, the embodiments of the aspects of your soul, the your higher self will manifest itself in different in a, in a, a bodily form that you can speak to and gain wisdom from. Your childlike self, the the shadow self, which typically manifests itself in nightmares, right, and it chases you and stuff, but it's really just wanting to be embraced by you because it's a discarded aspect of yourself. When you recognize that, when you recognize that you enter into a dream and you recognize that the floor seems solid, but you know that it's not, you wonder what is it made out of. You recognize that the scenery, everything in there, is made of you. It's made out of your consciousness. So. You are it, it is you, you abide in it, and it abides in you at the same time, right? You recognize that the characters, the scenery, all that stuff are embodiments of you, different aspects of you. So when you look into the one conscious person's eyes, you're looking directly into the eyes of you, though you don't know this being. Same thing with this person and this person and this person and that person. Now imagine when you wake up, you come out of that. And then you look at this and you recognize that this floor appears to be solid, but science tells us that it's not really solid. That, you know, everyone has consciousness in them and that all consciousness is one. And then you have to ask yourself, well, whose dream am I in then? If I and that person are the same consciousness and that person is the same consciousness, well, who is the overall dreamer whose consciousness or psyche is being embodied in me? You know, you're made into the same image. That's why I say, it's, in my opinion, it's a very powerful thing because it has shown me so much about God, about the spiritual realm. And I now practice lucid living, not just lucid dr dreaming, but I try to maintain the fact that I am a dream character in someone else's dream 100% of the time, as opposed to being convinced that this dream is reality. Like someone else who doesn't recognize their dreaming until they wake up. I don't want to have to wait until I die to recognize that this was a dream, all right? So it's a pretty deep topic. It's got a lot of layers to it and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm sure people will have questions. Um, ask them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. Some things might be too deep for me to type a long drawn out uh, paragraph about. I might just make another video about it, all right? But I look forward to talking with y'all about it. And I really look forward to hearing y'all's success stories of doing this and what you see and what you experience, all right? I'll talk to y'all more about this in another video. Peace.